Honourable. Alicia Cairns. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I would like to thank my right honourable friend and all the members of the committee who showed such sensitivity in their discussion of this topic and their questioning of us. I would also, however, like to pay tribute to two other people, which is the speakers, who throughout my time as a young mother, I have a 17 month old who's very good friends with the honourable member across the other side, uh, they play together very nicely, um, who have at all times showed complete support of new mothers, whether it be leaving the chamber to breastfeed or needing any sort of support at all. So I thank them. I'd also like to recognise the new Chief Whip, who has made real efforts on this side of the House to support those who are pregnant or who have these sorts of concerns and needs. Um, my question to my right honourable friend is that I think we have to be very careful in the public discourse about this place because it is like no other workplace. And I think there are mistaken comparisons to our constituents who work at shop worker tills, who can't bring their baby with them, to lawyers who are fighting domestic abuse cases, similar topics we discussed, who would not be allowed to bring their babies with them. And I think I have some concerns about the use of the discretion of the chair, for example, Westminster Hall, and that being abused, because the pressure I've come under during this period has been quite strong. And I fear that chairs or committees might feel that they have been forced to allow babies. Could she clarify, therefore, two things? First of all, as she touched on earlier, we are not banning babies from the entire building. We are banning them from this chamber. And my babies are here every single day, as many colleagues raised to me. I don't even know they've been in the building, and they have. Um, and would she also touch on when parents, particularly fathers, their babies find themselves in a neonatal care unit, can she clarify whether or not the committee looked at whether fathers, therefore, should receive a far extended parental leave period so that they can support their babies through that really sensitive time? Thank and I thank my honourable friend, and I do want to pay tribute to her for the evidence that she gave. As, as to the honourable lady for Walther, Walthamstow, we both gave oral evidence on what is a contentious issue, and I agree with her that the, the, the speakers, the deputy speakers, and the chairs have always shown incredible sensitivity and compassion. And um, we have conventions in this house around attending openings and closing, being there for um, the, the speeches before and speeches afterwards. But I know that the chairs have often used their discretion to recognise that, that, that the timing of a speech may not coincide with the timing of a baby needing feeding and therefore have allowed for the member to have that discretion. And, and I do pay tribute to you, Madam Deputy Speaker, for all you have done on this. And yeah, somebody yeah, who was a trailblazer yeah. as a mother in this yeah, place, yeah. Uh, you know only too well. Um, she's absolutely right as well. Babies are not banned. Babies and children are not banned from the precincts. In fact, go out here any day and you will see members with their children enjoying the facilities and allowing them. It was very important to me as a young as a mother of young children when I came to this place that they understood the job I was doing and they could feel that they were part of it that was a very important thing and on fathers we have um, recommended that the work uh, women in equality committee's reports recommendations around fathers around um, having equality for fathers and mothers is, is, is adopted 